what is up? <laughs> what is up guys? Today we are going to talk about everyone's favorite boy, Shoto Todoroki. Probably, as described by many of the female UA students, the hottest student at the school. <laughs> And of course, to many of the boys out there also. Go get them, boys. Easy. There's some K comrades in the chat, boys. K comrades, so. Shota Todoroki is easily one of the most loved people in My Hero Academia. And for good reason. The boy is distant. He is emotionless. The boy is kind. He is sweet. He is stoic. He is calm. Has both daddy and mommy issues. Like, who the hell doesn't find that hot? And other than that, the boy is just very powerful. So today, we are going to talk about his diet. What he will need to go through the day and actually perform to the best of his ability. And let's start off by talking about some of those abilities and character traits. Shoto's last name is actually a pretty common one in Japan. The name contains the kanji for roar or a roaring fire, which is of course pretty fitting. And his first name contains the kanjis for both burning and freezing, Sho and To. As we can read in his character sheet, he has blood type O. And as you might remember from my past videos, which you can check out here, blood type is very important in Japan. It says a lot about different people, how they act and what foods they should eat to perform optimally throughout the day. And of course, we are going to take that into account when making Shoto's meal plan. Those with blood type O should eat high protein foods and eat lots of meat, vegetables, fish, fruit, but limit grains, beans, and legumes. To lose weight, seafood, kelp, red meat, broccoli, spinach, and olive oil are definitely the best. Wheat, corn, and dairy are to be avoided. But we are going to make one exception for his dishes, and I'll explain later why. Also in his character sheet is that his favorite food is Zaru Soba or Zaru noodles. As you might expect, Zaru noodles are of course going to be one of his meals. And I'll explain what Zaru noodles exactly are later in the video. Shoto is 176 cm tall. And unfortunately, it is never stated what his body weight is. But we can of course speculate. And speculating here is pretty easy, seeing how Shoto is actually kind of in the normal ranges of his supposed BMI. So I'm going to guess that he is weighing anywhere from 65 kilos to 80 kilos. It is also noteworthy that Shoto isn't incredibly buff. Deku for instance has a very high muscle mass, but Shoto just has abs, but not really any arms or any other outstanding muscles. That is why for Shoto's diet we are going to focus less on protein because it isn't really necessary to keep up those gains. And of course, I assume you are watching My Hero Academia, we all know that Shoto has a very quirky relationship with both <laughs> with both of his parents. His mother threw hot tea water on his face when he was young because she couldn't stand seeing his red hair thinking of Angie, his father. And Angie is just kind of a total piece of shit. <laughs> Speaking of quirks, Shoto has one. Half cold, half hot. Shoto's quirk gives him the ability to generate ice from the right side of his body and flames from the left side. Due to years of rejecting his father, Shoto has developed a habit of favoring ice even when fire would be a better option. This grudge also caused him to have difficulty controlling his flames. While he is capable of using both elements simultaneously, he isn't used to doing this and still needs to practice dual wielding. While training for his ultimate move, he claimed that using both abilities at the same time slows him down. If he overuses one element without utilizing the other, then his own body temperature will suffer. The ice half will cause frostbite and the fire half will cause heat stroke. Until his bodily limit is reached however, neither has any visible effect on his body. Shoto can easily negate this weakness by alternating between ice and fire. Reference to Game of Thrones of course. <laughs> As part of his training, Shoto sat in a barrel of ice water and alternated between using ice and fire to regulate the temperature of the water. It helped his body become accustomed to the cold and he learned to better control his flames. Today, a bit of a plot twist. We are going to talk about the connection between psychology and food. You might be thinking right now, how is this in any way related to Shoto Todoroki? And I'll get to the point, just wait a second. Humans constantly interact through food and eating. Everything that we do, for example, sitting at the head of the table at your house, is all related to how we see ourselves and others related to us. For example, being selected to cut the Thanksgiving turkey is a sign of honor. And for example, caviar, I don't know what it is in English, probably caviar, you'll see it here on screen. Caviar. Caviar. <laughs> and before, but eating caviar is a sign of richness. So the foods that we choose to eat and most of the habits we have while eating the food often point to experiences we had while younger or things that we enjoyed doing or who we are as a person. You probably never thought about food this way, but think of how much food brings people together in this world. So after thinking about this for a long time, I made a food list for Todoroki that he will enjoy so much. It just contains the foods that reflect him growing as a person, his relationship to his parents and a whole heck of a lot of stuff. So I've let you wait long enough, let's skip right to breakfast. We'll start today off with a cold brew coffee. 
course it isn't going to be hot and just symbolically it looks really good rejecting all of the hotness altogether and just drinking it straight up cold. Coffee is a very good way to start your day. It gives you energy, it actually helps you burn fat and of course if you're that type of person coffee is actually very delicious. And if anyone is going to have an easy time cooling off their coffee it might as well be Todoroki. Regarding food he's going to start off eating oats, mom's oats specifically. Oats nutrition components are very well balanced. Oats are a very good source of fiber and carbs including the powerful fiber beta glucane. It also has a decent amount of protein and fat compared to most other grains. Oats are fully loaded with fiber, protein, minerals and antioxidants plant compounds. It helps you to reduce your cholesterol levels and protect you from LDL cholesterol from damage. It helps you to control blood sugar levels and also helps you to lose weight. Next to the oats he is going to have a bowl of yogurt with fruit in it. Many studies have been done on the health benefits of yogurt. One published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that yogurt improved gastrointestinal function in subjects, meaning it could help prevent many digestive problems problems such as lactose intolerance, constipation, colon cancer, inflammatory bowel disease and many more. People with a high intake of yogurt are also less likely to develop diabetes. Yogurt, like most dairy products, is a good source of calcium, which helps build stronger bones and prevent osteoporosis. Yogurt also contains vitamin A, important for your eyes, vitamin E, which improves your immune system, and a natural antioxidant bacteria, which improves the health of the gut flora, linoleic acid, which also boosts the immune system and acts as an anti-carcinogen, and of course, protein, which has a wide range of benefits including weight loss and muscle health. Of course, it's important to know what type of yogurt you're getting, while yogurts from whole milk will have more vitamin A and E. Also, you can often find dairy products fortified with vitamin D, a very important vitamin to make sure you get enough of. The bacteria added to milk to form yogurt are perhaps the most important ingredients and play a major role in the benefits of yogurt to your digestive system. It is also where the terms prebiotic and probiotic come into play. Some foods, like apples for instance, can be prebiotic, meaning they contain nutrients beneficial to the gut bacteria living naturally in our digestive tracts. Others are probiotic, which means that the living bacteria is actually in the food, thereby increasing the good bacteria or gut flora in our bodies. In the yogurt, Shoto is going to have two types of fruit, apples and strawberries. Apples play an important part in several Greek myths. Hera, queen of the gods, owned some precious apple trees that she had received as a wedding present from Gaia, the earth mother. These trees grew in a garden somewhere far in the west. Their apples were golden, tasted like honey and had magical powers. They healed the sick or injured, they renewed themselves as they were eaten, and if thrown, they always hit their target and then returned to the thrower's hand. Damn. <laughs> strawberries have a special meaning to the Seneca of the northeastern United States. Because strawberries are the first fruit to ripen in the year, they are associated with spring and rebirth. The Seneca also say that strawberries grow along the path to the heavens and that they can bring good health. Honestly, I think that Shota Todoroki is my favorite character in UA. Just so you know. The boy deserves his own video. As we talked about before, food symbolizes many different things. For example, in addition to caviar, we have of course the one million dollar bagel in New York City, which is very popular among rich people. <laughs> and of course, eggs, beans and rice symbolizes poverty. In the Netherlands, we have the Strobafel, which is of course very symbolic for our culture. And you can probably think of like a million other things that symbolizes your culture or who you are as a person. Because when I talk about, okay, this is kind of stereotypical, huh? <laughs> <laughs> because if I'm going to talk about the Italian restaurant up ahead that's called Mario's, I don't think that I'm going to eat Chinese food there. Okay, it isn't that stereotypical. I could have made this a lot worse. <laughs> but the important thing is that food also symbolizes interpersonal relationships. You can of course think about lovers feeding each other food as a symbol of their relationship and intimacy. What's that fuck? Uh, what's that spaghetti scene called? It's on screen right now. Isn't this cute? Yeah. I love being alone. And more importantly for this video, humans ascribe a maternal feeling to food as well. This fact has actually been very well researched. Some badly abused children use chewing and compulsive eating to symbolically destroy the mother, while other abused survivors use chewing and compulsive eating as a symbolic replacement for maternal love. And as you might expect, this is of course a pretty unhealthy way of eating. But it is problematic for both a simple and a difficult reason. I'll touch upon this again later in the video and I'll go deeper into it. But in short, some patterns just dig their way into our brains very deeply. And it becomes so intertwined with our normal behavior that very dangerous habits become absolutely normal to us. And if you are constantly overeating because you were abused as a child, this pattern will stay with you for the rest of your life. So let's talk about Saru Soba noodles. Soba, or buckwheat, is a thin Japanese noodle made from buckwheat. The noodles are served either chilled with a dipping sauce or hot in the noodle soup. But for Shoto, they of course will be chilled. 
variety Nagano soba includes wheat flour. In Japan, soba noodles can be found in a variety of settings, from fast food places to expensive specialty restaurants. Markets sell dried noodles and mensuyu, or instant noodle broth, to make home preparations easy. There are a wide variety of dishes, both broth for winter and cold for summer. Using these noodles, soba can nutritionally complement many other grains like white rice or wheat. Thiamine, missing from white rice, is present in soba. Soba contains all eight essential amino acids, including lysine, which is lacking in wheat flour. The tradition of eating soba arose in the Edo period. The word zaru means a strainer in Japanese, and the name of the dish was derived from the way the noodles were served over a bamboo strainer during the Edo period. This recipe is amazing and will definitely fill Shoto up with enough carbs, protein and important stuff to get him all riled up to go again and again during training. The ingredients, real quick, for the sesame dressing it is 1 4th cup of rice vinegar, 2 tablespoons of tamari, more for serving, half a teaspoon of toasted sesame oil, 1 teaspoon of grated ginger, 1 garlic clove, grated, half a teaspoon of maple syrup or honey, and for the soba noodles you can of course buy those in the store. Going back to the relationship between emotions and eating, all humans possess the mechanism to eat over feelings. No matter if you are sad or happy, uh, we all just kind of eat when we feel something. The problem is, in most compulsive overeaters, this system is triggered a lot. And with everything that they feel, anything that they feel, any emotion, they start to eat because they don't have any other way to react to the emotions that they feel. A normal reaction for you might be uh, when you are happy, you will start to tell someone why you are happy or you will give them a hug, you will <laughs> tell them about your day. But for another person, it might just be eating. And like most things, this all has to do with the way we grew up, where we grew up, with who, who raised us and in what culture we grew up. And to a certain extent, it even has to do with the neurochemistry of the brain. But this field is currently very under-researched and we can't really make any definite claims about it. So we mostly have to rely on cultural factors. And of course, we all know in the end why this is bad. Because if we eat too much consistently, eventually we will just die. <laughs> just think of how ingrained food is in our society. And most of our social interactions have to do with some form of food. When you go to the cinema, for example, there is a very big chance that you will anticipate the popcorn and the soda you will get there. And you are very excited for it. Here, at least in the Netherlands, we go out to drink with some of our friends. We all want deep fried food. <laughs> we, we want it. That is probably one of the reasons why we are actually going. Just to eat and have a good time. One of the most fun date ideas I've ever tried is just picking a girl up, getting a blanket, going to the store, grabbing all sorts of food, doesn't really matter what it is, and just eating it together on a, in a park, on a blanket, watching the stars or sunset. And food really makes the experience, which is kind of really strange to realize. So for Shoto as well, everything in his life probably bundled down or is reflective in the food that he eats. There is probably a very good chance, I've never researched this in my life, but I will start to try. I think there is a very good chance that if we collect everything that a person eats in his life, we can say like 60% of what that person is like, who he interacts with and where he grew up, at least the last one. But of course, food culture changes over time. And so, while so far we have only discussed cold foods, right now we are going to add something new, the flames. What a, what a good life. <laughs> ah, it's almost like God wanted this. Shoto grows a lot during the series. The relationship with his father becomes better over time. And especially during the fight with Deku, Shoto really starts to accept himself for who he is and the firepowers that he has. I really want to reflect this in the dishes that he is eating. So over time, I am adding more and more hot stuff to his dishes just to get him used to the kind of fiery side of himself and his father so for dinner we are again going to focus on cold and hot or at least the combination of it this trend has been going on in a lot of restaurants worldwide with chefs trying to experiment these two opposites <laughs> they are really opposites but trying to combine them into one delicious dish mr von gerichten the chef at the lafayette in new york has reinvented the mundane american shim cocktail periodically presenting hot gently steamed shrimp with paints of frozen tomato horseradish sauce. David Waldock, chef and owner of the Chantretel, sets new bins of foie gras, sautéed and deglazed with vinegar, next to glaciated oysters in half the shell. Seared salmon fillets in a horseradish crust are placed against the ice-cold salmon eggs and lukewarm poached cucumbers with dill at the Polo restaurant in Manhattan. I find that customers are more educated and involved than before, says Van Gerichten. They want to be surprised, even a little bit shocked. The interest in playing with temperatures may have been heightened by the Nouvelle Cuisine. 
With its petite portions of hot game or seafood, a lot of people really enjoy it. The idea grew in part from hot Indian curries released by the cooling yogurt and vegetable salads, and Southeast Asian foods that pair fiery aromatic shellfish and poultry dishes with cool cucumber or bean sprout and peanut salads and cold dipping sauce. California cuisine with its grilled whatever on a tangle of baby lettuce and melting goat cheese nestled on greens is nearly a national standard. You can see the ingredients to the dishes right here on screen and they both look delicious honestly. And I think it is really important for Shota to take this step and accept his father more into his life and accept both his hot and cold side. And that is why for dessert he is also going to have something that combines both the best of the hot and the cold ingredients. So he's going to have ice cream with hot fudge. But not just any ice cream, because it has to be insanely cold. Dry ice is delicious. I've tasted it myself and it is actually really good and it also looks so extremely cool. So that is why I think that Shoto needs to have this ice cream and I think he will really enjoy it himself because he might be able to make it actually. <laughs> No, but it is really delicious and just eating ice cream of course is very nice, but there is something missing, something extra. And that is why, because we need something hot, we are also going to add some hot fudge in order to warm it up a little and let Shoto accept more of his father's side. What I really want you to take away from this video is that food is so incredibly ingrained into our culture. Almost every interaction in our daily lives are surrounded. Almost every interaction in our daily lives is related to some sort of food. And that is fine. Like food is a very important cultural thing around the world. Different cultures have different foods and that all makes it very exciting. But it is very important to realize that your everyday decisions probably <laughs> also have very much to do with what kind of breakfast you had this morning, if you are hungry or not. And the foods that you eat today all have to do like 90% with where you grew up and what kind of food you ate when you were younger. So we all are kind of biased. <laughs> and that is fine. Like food is fun, honestly. Get a date, take her out, have fun, eat some food, enjoy yourself. Shoto is a very good kid. He has had a very rough childhood. Um, his mom threw hot tea on him, hot water. His father's kind of prick. Brothers, sisters, uh, dead, maybe not dead. Um, fan speculation theories. A cute sister though. <laughs> it's all kind of a mess. And we can see that Shoto has actually come from that pretty well. But he's very reserved. And the foods that he eats are also very reserved. But he is definitely starting to grow as a person. He's slowly adding more flames to his eyes. <laughs> And he does that as well in his ice cream with hot fudge. He's starting to accept his father more for who he is as a person. And he hopes that one day maybe they can grow together. And I think that that is very, very, very impressive. Just like the dishes that he eats are including a lot more hot foods. He too is starting to accept his dad for who he is and is growing as a person. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. If not already, please subscribe to this channel, leave a like on this video and comment down below. It all really helps out the channel much more than you know. And I just want to grow the channel a lot more because I'm planning on making a lot more videos. Okay guys, that was it for me. Thank you for watching and I will see you all later. Honestly, I... Ah.